Hi everyone, our subject today is limp in pediatrics. Limp may be characterized by any alteration of the normal age appropriate gait pattern. Be careful, painful or painless and the result of a range of condition from benign to life threatening and limb threatening. Differential diagnosis of limp is extensive and can be classified by disease category age of the child or by location of pathology may be due to pain, weakness, a torsional deformity, or a musculoskeletal disorder. History, onset, duration, and progression of limb, acute versus chronic, recent trauma and mechanism, exercise history, suggest trauma, etiology, Associated pain, intermittent versus continuous, localized versus generalized, sharp versus dull versus burning, referred pain. Prematurity and birth complication are risk factor for hypoxic brain damage, like cerebral palsy. For older children, inquire about a history of trauma and systemic sign and symptoms, fever, rash, generalized weakness, weight loss that may suggest infections or rheumatic disorder. Always be conscious of uh, the possibility of child abuse, non-accidental trauma. Preceding in the intercurrent illness, diarrhea, reactive arthritis, pharyngitis, acute rheumatic fever, upper respiratory tract infection, transient or toxic synovitis, Weakness suggests neurological etiology, ability to walk and or bear weight, family history, associated sign and symptoms, abdominal pain, like in neuroblastoma, psoas abscess, appendicitis, and pelvic inflammatory disease, back pain, discitis, spinal cord tumor, vertebral osteomyelitis, Fever, anorexia, weight loss, night sweating, consider malignancy, osteomyelitis, rheumatological disorder, and septic arthritis. Joint limb swelling suggests infectious, traumatic, neuro- uh, rheumatologic, or hematological etiologies. Uh, neck pain and uh, photophobia, meningitis. Migratory joint pain, acute rheumatic fever, gonococcal arthritis, and Lyme disease. Morning stiffness in rheumatological disorder. Physical examination. General vital sign fever may indicate an underlying infectious or inflammatory process. Body habitus in obese adolescent consider skipped capital femoral epiphysis. Height and weight poor growth is an indicator of a chronic disorder. Musculoskeletal resting limb position a flexed externally rotated hip suggests fluid in the hip joint space. Gait, ability to bear weight, types of gait. Swelling, suggests trauma, infection, rheumatological inflammatory causes, deformity, and laxity. Tenderness to palpation, inspect and palpate the sole of the foot to rule out foreign body. Isolate areas of the leg and apply force through the area to determine if pain is in the bone to which force is applied. Apply force through the foot, ankle in isolation, through the tibia, fibula, and then through the femur or hip. Range of motion. Resistant to extension and internal rotation of the hip suggest an increased fluid in hip joint as can be seen with the septic arthritis or toxic synovitis. Symmetry of the limbs. Trendelenburg sign, when standing on one leg, the pelvis on that side drops, indicating weak hip abductor muscles and suggestive of neuromuscular abnormality. Gilyazi sign, asymmetry flexion of the infant's knee to the buttocks indicate a possible congenital hip abnormality. Patrick test, flexion, abduction, and external rotation of the hip cause pain, indicating a traumatic, infectious, or inflammatory hip or 
sacroiliac joint abnormality. Pelvic compression test if pain or instability is elicited with the direct pressure on the iliac crest, pelvic trauma should be considered. Spine exam for scoliosis or dumbling. Neurologic sensation and central, deep tender reflexes and spasticity, meningeal sign, skin, warmth, color, rash, bruises or petechia. Abdomen, tenderness, rebound, gardening, masses, if present, suggest abdominal appendicitis, abscess, or pelvic pathology. Hepatomegaly or splenomegaly, if present, may suggest malignancy. How to approach to a child with limb after performing history and physical examination? Is it painful, antalgic gait? If it is, yes. Is there history of trauma? If it is yes, perform X-ray. If it is normal result, if it is yes, differential diagnosis, contusion, ligament sprain, or muscle strain. If it is abnormal X-ray, differential diagnosis, fracture, or slipped capital femoral epiphysis. If there is no history of trauma, if the patient has fever, acutely ill, if it is yes, patient need, CVC, ESR, C-reactive protein, X-ray, ultrasound, MRI, bone scan, consider Lyme titer. If the result normal, uh, differential diagnosis, transient synovitis or rheumatologic disease. If it is abnormal result, differential diagnosis, osteomyelitis, septic arthritis, transient synovitis, rheumatologic disease, discitis, and Lyme disease. If patient uh, not acutely ill and uh, does not have fever, the patient need X-ray and MRI and consider Lyme titer. Differential diagnosis, occult trauma, non-accidental trauma, child abuse, transient synovitis, avascular head necrosis, slipped capital femoral epiphysis, new shoes, overuse injury, apophysitis, uh, patellofemoral pain, stress, fracture, discitis, rheumatic disease, tumor, plantar wart, tarsal coalition, neuromuscular disorder, abdominal pathology, testicular torsion, Lyme arthritis, and other causes. If the patient uh, does not have pain, is there a limb noticeable at the age patient to begin walking? If it is no, it's the same as the, if the patient has trauma or not. If it is yes, a neurological examination, normal or not. If it is normal, differential diagnosis, developmental uh, dysplasia of head, uh, leg length inequality, talibus equinus, club foot. If it is uh, not normal examination, differential diagnosis, cerebral palsy, neuromuscular disease, and spinal dysraphism. Children are more at risk for epiphyseal fracture than a ligamentous sprain because their ligaments are generally stronger than the adjacent growth plates. Because X-ray may be normal or show only physial widening, the diagnosis is often clinical. Consultation should always be considered when in doubt. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis is the most common hip disorder in adolescent presenting with pain or an abnormal gait. In this condition, a failure of the physis growth plate leading to posterior displacement of the metaphysis femoral neck relative to the epiphysis femoral head. In many cases, an undiagnosed chronic slip is diagnosed after it is acutely worsened by trauma. A careful history of an illicit chronic complaint of pain, subtle limb, or self-imposed activity restriction. Examination reveal limited internal rotation of the affected hip and an out painful gait. AP and frog leg lateral radiograph are routinely recommended to, the, uh, to make the, the diagnosis. The latter should be performed with the caution because of the potential risk for further displacement of the slip. Bilateral views are recommended because the condition is bilateral in 25% of cases 
at initial presentation. Conditions like hypothyroidism, pituitary disorder, and renal osteodystrophy can impact bone ossification and increase the risk of the developing slipped captor femoral epiphysis. When infection or inflammation is suspected, laboratory tests, CBC, ESR, C-reactive protein may be helpful but are non-specific. Blood cultures yield a positive result in about 50% of cases of osteomyelitis. Rates may be higher with the specimen from a bone biopsy or abscess aspiration. If the X-ray is negative and the clinical suspicion is high, Ultrasound may aid in detecting joint effusion, especially of the hip. If uh, an effusion is present, joint aspiration is recommended to rule out septic arthritis. MRI is the preferred diagnostic test when the osteomyelitis is suspected. Septic arthritis is an infection confined to the capsule of the joint. Infection within the bone is osteomyelitis, sec uh, secondary separate to involve the joint may accompany it. Both disorders may present with localized pain and tenderness in acutely ill child. Osteomyelitis may also occur subacutely with prolonged pain and limb but without fever or systemic complaint. Bone changes on X-ray may not become evident for 7 to 10 days. Soft tissue changes may be evident earlier, plus film are usually obtained to rule out trauma and tumor initial. MRI is the preferred choice for diagnostic imaging if available. Bone scans are also sensitive and specific early in the clinical course if MRI is not available. Septic arthritis is a medical emergency requiring proper diagnosis and treatment. Patient typically present with fever, malaise, refusal to walk, and localized joint pain, most commonly knee or hip. Examination reveal erythema, warmth, swelling, and pain with the passive motion. Ultrasound evaluation may suggest the diagnosis by demonstrating an effusion but joint aspiration is ma mandated to confirm or rule out the diagnosis. Acute transient synovitis, previously called toxic synovitis, is one of the most common causes of hip pain and limping in children, usually between 3 and 8 years of age. The etiology is not well defined. It is described as a nonspecific inflammatory condition although viral, allergic, and traumatic mechanism have all been suggested. Children present with the unilateral hip pain, a painful limp, and a slightly restricted abduction and internal rotation. Fever may be present, but rarely do patients present with acute toxicity suggest of septic arthritis. The diagnosis is one of the exclusion, the most important diagnosis to exclude is septic arthritis. Several recent studies have focused on identifying factors that help distinguish a septic joint which require emergent treatment from transient synovitis which is managed conservatively. The more of these factors that are present, the greater the likelihood of a septic joint. Fever above 38.5 Celsius, an elevated C-reactive protein, an elevated ESR, refusal to bear weight, and an elevated white PC. With transient synovitis, laboratory results are usually normal or suggest a mild inflammatory process. X-rays are usually normal or may show a slightly widened medial joint space or accentuated uh, precapsular shadow. Rarely, ultrasound and aspiration to rule out septic arthritis may be necessary when a child presents acutely with pain and fever. Children present after one to two days of symptoms may usually be managed more conservatively. 
avascular necrosis of uh, femoral head or a leg calf perthes disease is an ischemic necrosis of the femoral head resulting in a bony deformity of the femoral head. Children between 2 and 12 years of age are affected with a peak incidence between 4 and 8 years of age. Boys are affected more than girls. Children commonly demonstrate a limb before complaining of pain. Pain complaints are usually associated with activity. The pain may be located in the groin or referred to the anteromedial thigh or knee. Common physical findings include slightly restricted abduction and internal rotation, over time hip flexion, contractures, atrophy of the leg muscle, and a leg length discrepancy may be evident due to the, uh, disease disuse. Night pain characteristic of both benign and malignant primary or metastatic tumor. Characteristic X-ray finding usually suggests the diagnosis of the benign bone tumor. Intervention, biopsy removal, monitor will be required for many of them. If not uh, diagnosed in infancy, developmental dysplasia of the hip (DDH) will usually present as a limp, wide uh, waddling gait, or a leg length discrepancy after the child starts walking. On physical exam, hip abduction will be limited, a positive giliazi sign, knees at differential level, different level with the hips flexed when the child lying supine may be evident and lumbar lordosis may be present due to altered hip mechanics. Spastic dysplasia, uh, spastic diplasia is the most common type of cerebral palsy. Affected children are delayed in crawling and walking. The condition is characterized by toe walking and a painless waddling Trendelenburg gait. Examination reveal increased muscle tone, spasticity, hyperactive deep tender reflexes, tight heel cords, and persistent pathologic reflexes. Top tips. Before diagnosing a disease in a child with a leg pain and limping, examine the shoes for poor fit or foreign body such as nail. These are common causes. The history of a growing pain is diagnosis of non-articular pain occurring at night for at least six months and normal physical examination. Limping may be due to discrepancy of the leg length Measurement of the leg is preferred by tape measure of the distance between anterior iliac spine and the medial malleolus. DDH may pass unnoticed at birth and presentation is with limping. If DDH is unilateral, the affected limb is shortened by at least 2 cm significant. If bilateral, Gait uh, resemble duck walk due to increased lumbar lordosis. In a child with a preceding upper respiratory tract infection who is febrile with sudden limbing, transient synovitis is very likely. Laboratory and radiologic investigation are usually normal. Although X-ray of the leg are often requested for uh, suspected cases of avascular necrosis, osteochondrosis, a more important reason is to exclude other lesions such as tumor. Long-term use of steroid can cause osteoporosis, fracture, and avascular necrosis. Red flag. Be aware that children older than 10 years with the Perthes disease will almost certainly develop degenerative arthritis later on. Any boy with the delayed walking age of 18 months and Duchenne muscle dystrophy should be excluded by checking the serum creatinine phosphokinase. Children present with the repeated stumbling and falls and difficulty climbing upstairs. When the knee is examined, patellofemoral crepitation may be elicited. This is common in normal individuals and does not indicate any disease. 
Remember that imaging of the bone is normal in the early stage of Perthes disease. The crescent sign is a frog lateral position is the earliest possible radiologic sign. Many children with hip disease present with the knee pain. Pain in Perthes disease typically manifests in the groin or thigh, radiating to the knee. Examination of all joint is necessary. In a young child, child with the unexplained pain, child abuse should not be forgotten in the differential diagnosis. Examine the skin carefully for relevant bruising. Skeletal survey may be required. Pierce and pitfall. The most common cause of limb in the pediatric age group are trauma and toxic synovitis. Critical action in emergency department is to rule out life and limb threatening causes of limb. Work up in the emergency department often will include CBC, ESR, C-reactive protein, and plain radiograph. Treatment involves alleviating pain and tend, uh, tending to underlying etiology of the limb. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis is the most common uh, hip disorder in adolescent if it occurs prepubertal and endocrine causes such as hypothyroidism or growth hormone deficiency may be uh, the underlying pathology. In children with uh, uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, more than 50% was uh, present with bone involvement with limping and pain typically in the morning mainly in the lower extremities. Okay. Thank you for your listening.